Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Sweden or Bust. And I still can't say that in a way that doesn't make me feel weird. And I don't know why that is. I will figure that out and get back to you. Right then. In the last episode, we'd just been knocked out of the Europa League by Standard Liège. And as a result of those games, the Malmö game was pushed back. We have four straight away games in the league. And I was really not looking forward to it, frankly. Especially not an away game at Malmö. Now, before we get into the fixtures, I need to talk to you guys about the youth intake, because we've had it, and I didn't know when the youth intake was in Sweden. It turns out it's somewhere in September, which is cool, and I'm going to show you what happened in our youth intake, because my goodness, I don't know if they still count as youth intake players. Let me just see if they... No, okay, they don't. But frankly, there's one player that really stood out to me, and you'll see who he is very, very quickly when we uh, take a look at the squad. Right, this guy. This guy, my god, this is Amir Mohammadi. Now, he is actually Swedish, um, he is a Swedish Iranian, so you can imagine that he'll probably be getting some, some caps for some country in his career at some point, whether it be Sweden or Iran. But it stands to reason it's probably likely that he's going to get call ups for Sweden. In fact, I'm pretty certain he's already been called up for the under 19s. I'm fairly certain he's already received a, uh, a Sweden under 19 call up, and he is 16 years old. And not by much either. This kid is amazing. He's a right midfielder, but I'm already training him to play right side of attack in midfield in the sort of winger role there, because that's basically where he's going to get used in this team, because we don't play any right uh, right sided midfielders, so it'd be a waste. But since he's only 16, and it won't take much, I wouldn't have thought to train him in that position. Let's just show you how good he is for the winger attack role. So, crossing is already 15 at the age of 16. Dribbling at 12, not bad. Technique, 14. Excellent. His physical stats are pretty damn decent as well for a 16-year-old. 12 pace, 12 balance, 12 agility, only 10 acceleration. Hopefully these physicals can improve. But he's also got decent jumping reach and natural fitness. So that's pretty decent. And he's quite tall, 190 centimetres. He's a big dude, which is surprising for a winger. He's pretty strong. Stamina's not great. Hopefully that'll improve. The only areas that he's really sort of down a little bit is his mental stats. Decisions at five, flare at six, off the ball seven. I do worry about those a little bit. I don't know how much they can be trained in terms of maybe experience will help with these. I, I don't know. I, I forget how the mechanic works on Football Manager. If anyone can... Let me know. Will his decisions flaring off the ball be a massive hindrance to his career, or is that just something that will improve with age? I don't know. Let me know. His determination, though, 19. It was 18. It's already gone up to 19. He is a determined young man, and hopefully he can prove to be an excellent player for us. He was originally uh, four and a half stars, but now he's a five-star player, so this lad is dynamite, and I'm really, really happy with him. He was sort of the only real standout from our uh, youth intake this year. We have... I don't know if a Glenn Nilsson was another. Yeah, actually, Glenn Nilsson, he's a pretty decent defender. He certainly has a lot of potential to be a decent defender as well. Let's just have a look at his central defender. Defend? I think we play defend. So, physicals, jump and reach, and strength, pretty decent. But again, his mentals, though, he does have good determination. His heading is 10, marking 8, tackling 9. He could be half decent. We'll have to see. A lot of potential there as well, though, in theory. So, we have a a lot of young players at this club and a lot of them are obviously going to be released because there's just not a lot of quality i am going to start now scouting the other team's youth intakes i thought i had a look at some of them already um but unfortunately none of the players that play for any teams in the arsvenskan are willing to come to us it, every time it just says no intention of joining our club so what i'm going to do is go ahead and scout the youth intakes of the slightly small i think i've already done this actually i've i've might have skipped a few in there i'm going to scout the youth intakes or more of them, of the smaller clubs in Sweden, to see if we can find it. Obviously, their, their youth academies aren't going to be as good as the bigger clubs, but you sometimes still get gems there, and they'll definitely want to be leaving to go to a bigger side as quickly as possible. And I can't remember if I've already found a couple. Let's just go in, and I'm going to do this now before we go into the fixtures, because I just wanted to get this stuff out of the way so you could see it. I'm just going to look and see if we have managed to sign up any of these youngsters. Yes, we have. Okay, I did manage to find a couple already. There will be more than I'm looking for, but let's just go to future transfers and I'll show you. I actually found, well, I found three. Uh, Rasmus Schürrle is not one of them. He is a player that I've managed to pick up from HJK Helsinki uh, on a free at the end of the season. 
Um, obviously going to be paying his wage, but it's not a huge amount of money anyway, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. He's only 23 years old as well, so I'm surprised that we've ever been able to get him. He's not a great player, but he'll just sort of provide decent backup there, and we're only paying the wages, so no real biggie there. And he could still improve to be an all right player in the future, apparently, so you never know. But it's these three that I'm excited about. Now, I've gone ahead and used most of that, tra well, not most of the transfer budget, we've still got plenty left, to bring in some of these guys. They're only on like 250 quid a week, so there's no problem with the wages. I've had to pay mostly compensation of around about £16,000 for each of them. But I want to take you through some of them. Uh, these are some lower league sides. Uh, so we got this guy, Michael Francisco, who we got off of uh, Skurvde. Four star, plays across the middle, and potentially as a striker. I think he could be pretty decent. It's worth a punt, anyway, for the little bit of money we're going to pay. Certainly will improve our youth academy, that's for sure. Or not the youth academy, but our under-21 side and our under-19 side is going to be crazy good, thanks to him. Next one was Andreas Youssef. And he is, a, well, again, a very decent player in a very similar position. But he also plays in the centre of midfield, too. So... Could also be decent. Four-star, not bad. I think the one I'm most excited about, though, or maybe not. This is uh, Tjernström. Uh, sorry, Schönström. Yeah, George Schönström. I think that's how it's pronounced. Schönström. He, again, four-star. I'm looking for anyone, basically, with four-star and above from, other of those, from those other teams' youth academies. Uh, we've actually got two from Forward, which is a great name for a team as well. And they've obviously got a decent youth academy because we managed to pick up two players from them. I've not finished scouting. There's a lot. There was like a thousand players in the youth intake. And I don't want to spend too much money on the scouting. So, But it might be worth it in the long run if we can make a load back from some, some of these sort of players. So we shall have to see what comes up with that. Right, so... And... Uh, yeah, and Helmar Johnson is actually joining um, Maccabi Tel Aviv at the end of the season. And Eric Lund is joining Heronveen. That's just something that's going to be happening, unfortunately, for us. Um... Wait, no, Eric Lund, surely he's already left. No, my bad. Hjalmar Johnson has already signed a contract to join Maccabi Tel Aviv on the 1st of January, and Eric Lund will be joining Heravine on the 1st of December. Right, that makes more sense. Right, let's get into the fixtures. Now, as I talked about in my series, if you watch my Fulham series, I wanted to try and do highlights of every uh, every game and every episode. The problem was it was going to make the series, that the episodes way too long, and it just wasn't worth it. However, what I am going to do is make sure that I show highlights of the most important game, in every episode that way you guys get to see it and you've got no doubt as to which game i'm going to be showing you and it is the first one we played against malma now you'll see that malma aren't doing that well they are at the moment when we played this game they were the big rivals for us in the league but as you'll see when i show you the league table they've started to slide a little bit and i don't know how or why these guys are they're the best team in sweden at the moment in theory but <clears throat> not according to this anyway uh, we're just going to jump straight into the highlights and I will talk you through it when we get there. Right then, here we are. Now, we actually, if you look at the stats, had more shots. But they were much, much better. They created so many clear-cut chances out of those chances they had. And eventually, things were going to take over for us. Now, in the 35th minute, ball comes in here straight to Marcus Rosenberg. And he finishes with a plum. Which is a great word. I love saying a plum. I don't really know what the word means. Sounds like a type of fruit. But we'll just move on from that. I like the fact that there's flares at this ground. I love the fact that in European games, you uh, in some of the European leagues, you do get flares. I had them in Portugal when I played a save earlier this year, and it was awesome. Only at some teams, though, and I like that. It's like a hidden attribute of the crowd or something, isn't it? Anyway, yeah. So for our only basically basically the only clear cut chance we got in this entire game, we just we played really well actually with the passing here in terms of well, until we lost the ball, of course. Ah. Pfft. I am a moron. Sorry, I'm so used to us not playing in the pink that I forgot that the pink was us this time. Like it's quite light as well. Right, yeah, we picked up the ball eventually in the midfield here after a slight mistake from Malma. Great little ball around the side from Zofchek. Zahora is out wide, whips it in, and they're at the far post. Eventually is John Goosens, who did pick up a knock in this game, which was a shame, but he did manage to get us the goal, which leveled, and then I just sat back because... As much as I wanted to try and beat them, they were playing better than us, as they have in every game this season. But they've yet to beat us. We've beat them twice and drawn against them twice. That's a decent record against them. I'd like to... Wait, they've only scored one goal against us. That goal that Rosenberg scored was the first time they'd scored against us all season. Anyway, then we moved on to an away game at Gordon, And, frankly, this one... I was hoping we could get a couple more goals due to the way we've been playing, and we probably should have. Uh, Whaler missed a penalty, unfortunately. We didn't actually really get going in this one until after the break when Mabelangu put us in front, quickly followed up by Soren Riex. 
unfortunately, we could have made it 3 0 about Kittle well and missed a penalty, which is rare because he's been pretty consistent from the spot this season. And then he had to go off injured, which was not good because, well, it just wasn't good. We managed to bring on Abdullah Mate, though, and he has been a useful cover. I thought he might be able to fit straight in, but he's actually done quite well just coming off the bench because Whaler, although he is very old, is still very capable and is keeping him out the side at the moment. This was the most frustrating game. Halmstad away. I figured we could go there and maybe get something. They are doing piss poor in the league, as you would have seen in the last episode. They were like 13th or something. We were better, but they came out with the win. Uh, Frederick Liverstam in the first half stoppage time, which was annoying. And then, of course, they grabbed another one for Adrandus Augustin. We also got John Goosens injured again. He's quite injury prone, it would appear, which was really annoying. But it was just one of those things that had to happen, I guess. Halmstad seem to have gone on they went on quite a run after this so you'll see that in a set they're really moving up the table so i don't know whether they've changed manager or not but they were 13th before this at the end of the last episode i think and they've really have started to bomb it up the league so maybe this isn't entirely a shock then though we went away to norshipping our lovely little bogey team and we nicked a 1-0 win i say nicked we were actually a lot better than them in this game which was surprising because I don't know what we did differently. I set up to try and defend this one just to try and not lose and it actually did get us the result and I think that maybe is how we should play against these guys in future because in the two games we played them so far in the cup and in the league they were both at home and we tried to attack them like crazy and they just picked us off. Admittedly, it was what, 3-1? No, 3-0 and then 2-1 and now we've managed to turn it around on them and Zofkat or Zofchak got us the goal. He's been quite decent since he's come in. He's actually been getting in the team ahead of Smith but Dallance sometimes. I've just been... He's been scoring goals and creating goals and I just thought, why not keep him in there? Uh, it's a shame for Smedberg Dallas uh, and you can sort of understand that if Lasse Vibert was still at the club he'd be even further behind some of these guys and that's not what you need at all moving along we then had a home game against BK Hecken and I really needed revenge here after what they did they had that massive smash and grab game against us if you before if you remember before when we had so many shots and just couldn't break them down and then they nicked one at the last minute fucking annoying but we got our revenge this time again would have liked more goals but I will have to settle for goals from Smedberg, Dallance and Röning Orvenstad. Now, again, they were pretty much just as bad as they were against us when they played at home. The difference is this time we got the win and that was the key here in this game. And the double barrel name scoring. Now, Orvenstad has been complaining at me because I've not been giving him first team football. And it's annoying because I have. I, I, I keep putting him in the team he keeps playing and he's scoring goals occasionally as well and yet he's still complaining about not getting first team football i don't know why that is if you've got any clue as to why he's still complaining i, I don't know let me know or maybe he's just a massive bell end who knows i don't know whether they've got the bell end trait but his bell end trait is probably around about 19 or 20 at the moment and the last game of the month well it was a home game against helsingborg and i was a little bit disappointed that we couldn't get the win here We've got a round of a few home games and I really wanted to make sure that we could put ourselves in a strong position going into those two difficult away games towards the end of the season. But unfortunately against Helsingborg, we weren't really able to do that. Um, no point in even showing you. I mean, I can show you the stats, I suppose. We, we probably... Well, actually, on the balance, it's pretty much even. They had a bit more possession than we did, but... And a little bit... They had one, we had one more shot, they had one more shot on target. It's a very, very even game. And hmm, perhaps a 0-0 is a reasonable result. Helsingborg are doing alright in the league though and let's show you that league now we will show you where we sit now we're actually two points clear at the top now but we are two points clear of Rebro and that's saying something because these guys I'm pretty sure they're newly promoted I, I can't remember exactly are they newly promoted? yes last year they got promoted from the Super N they're newly promoted side, and yet they are challenging for the league title in their first season. But I know they have won this league. I oh, know they haven't won this league before. I think the best finish they've ever had when I was checking earlier was a runner-up in like 1991 or something. If you know anything more about Orebro, and maybe they have won the league back in the day, like way back, then let me know because I'm curious. And I haven't had the time to do the research on that other than what I could find on Football Manager and the database doesn't go back that far. But they're having a cracking season and they've been on a great run. And I'll show you the past positions to prove that in a sec. Malma still hanging in there, but they aren't doing quite as well as I would have thought. I thought they would have been keeping pace with us. They're actually three points behind now. Helsingborg are in there too, but look how tight it is. It is so tight in that area. Halmstad now are up to sixth. And yeah, when I show you this, you'll see what I mean by that. In the sense that 
over just over this month, they've gone from 13th up to 6th in the league, and that is a big jump. And you can see that Orebro, well, they started off small and got bigger as well. Malmö, they've kind of slipped off the pace, but they've been occupying that third spot for a while now, and you feel that they're probably going to come back against us later in the same season. Helsingborg have been pretty consistent throughout, and I think they have anyway. Well, yeah, they've, they've, once they got into this sort of area, they've been pretty damn consistent. Elspore, unfortunately, sort of dropped away a little bit, and it looked like they're going to sort of finish around about fifth or sixth, unfortunately. And Norshipping, again, have dropped away a little bit. Well, no, they've been kind of there all season. Anyway... Let's move on to the, well, we can look at the stats, I guess. Take you guys through this. Let's see if that lovely filter has turned itself on again. Yep, of course it has. Don't know why, but it just does. Right, top appearance maker for us this season is Albogate, and he's made 45? That feels like a lot. That can't be... No, okay. It must be because of all the League and Cup games. It has to be. Anyway, 45 appearances for us, and he's obviously got himself a goal. And, yeah, he is the top appearance maker. Goal scored Zahora with 12, although Smedberg Dallas is right in there with 6. Whaler has... Uh, sorry, with 9. Whaler has 6. Um, most of those have been penalties, though. I think he has scored a couple from open play as well. And then it's Malangu, Riex, Gusens, Mane with only 3, but he's played mostly off the bench. So, a reasonable amount, but not too many goals. I'd like to get an out-and-out -out goal scorer for this team, someone that can really put some in the net. And I think we may have that in the form of Gustav Engvall. And we will be using him a lot more next season, because Zahora is still going to be here for the first half of the year. But I'm going to be sort of rotating him and Engvall to sort of get Engvall really involved. And he should take over that role in the second half of the season. We've also got some really talented youngsters coming through, which I'm looking forward to. Top assister is, well, actually Ludwig Augustinsson, who I'm pretty certain is a fullback. Yeah, he is. He's put in some great crosses from that left-hand side and, as a result, has created nine goals for us. Smedberg Dallas has also created nine goals. He's not been playing as much lately. Had an injury and you know how it is. <clears throat> His position has been filled quite well by Zofchak, who has done pretty damn well in that position. Most player of the matches, Malanga with nine. That's damn impressive. Very pleased for him. He's been a rock in that centre midfield role. Top pass percentage, well, that's Jacob Johansson. It was 87, so it's gone down slightly, but he is still a quality, quality player. Yellow cards, Malanga has the most, not surprising in that midfield role. We've had quite a few reds this season, unfortunately. Johansson, Biesmeer, Jonsson, Malangu, or Gustinson have all been sent off at one point or another this year, which is disappointing. Top average rating, well, that's Malangu again. In fact, by quite some distance, he looks like he could be a shoe in for player of the season this year. Now, we've got how many games left? Four. We have four games left. Admittedly, that game is in November, but I'm going to pop that in the end of the next episode as well. The next episode will be the last part of the season uh, because there's no point in one episode. But for the way things are going at the moment, we've got home games against Falkenberg and Elfsborg. Falkenberg are a terrible team from what I can make out. They are right down there in the relegation zone. So we should be able to win that, which will put us on 52 points. Elfsport at home. Oof. You'd have to say that that's winnable as well. We're at home. That'll be 55 points. Our Vita Bell. They are mid-table side. We might draw there, actually. But it's Orebro away, and I just wonder. Hopefully, we can have things sort of sewn up before the Orebro, because I think we can win the league. I genuinely do think we can win the league. And looking at those fixtures, Falkenberg and Elspor should be winnable. Avitabo, maybe, but Orebro is going to be difficult. And I want to try and make sure that we don't have to rely on a result there to try and win the league or that they can catch us. As long as, yeah, basically. So we'll have to see. And we will find out more about that in the next episode. We'll also talk about any other signings I've been able to make over the next month in that episode also. So, if you like what you've seen, hit the like button. If you like it even more than that, hit that big old subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.